In this video segment, I want to get into Ferber entities and how they apply to music. FRBR, or Ferber, is a set of standards for what kind of information should be included in cataloging and metadata. We'll go into cataloging requirements in more detail later in the semester, but I think it's useful to start thinking about some aspects of this now as a context for talking about how we describe items, um, even when we're talking about them more casually. The FERBER requirements include three sets of entities related to an item being cataloged or discussed. For now, I wanna talk about the group one entities. The group one entities include the work, expression, manifestation, and item. The work and expression are fairly abstract concepts. The work refers to the piece, the um, work of literature or music or whatever the library um, is dealing with as it exists in an abstract form, as an idea. The, the sort of idea that we invoke when we refer to a piece like Valerie Coleman's Afro-Cuban Concerto for Wind Quintet. Um, we're talking about that general idea of what that piece is rather than any particular item. The expression is a particular performance or version of the work. Uh, so it's still a somewhat abstract concept as it may not exist in a tangible form or it may exist in several. Um, a bit more concrete is the manifestation, a specific publication or recording of a version. So while the idea of um, a performance by Imani Wins of the Wind Quintet might be an expression, um, the manifestation might be a particular YouTube video or an album CD, um, it's that the manifestation is that particular publication or recording. Um, and then the item is even more concrete. It's the actual copy in your library, that physical item with its call number and its physical wear and tear or its highlighting, that specific item. Um, and this is somewhat more complex for music because we're likely to have many more expressions than it, for most books, especially um, academic books usually don't have many, many expressions, um, but musical works will. Musicologists debate about when this abstract idea of a musical work like this emerged, um, but it's important not to take it for granted, even though it's used as a sort of technical term in libraries. When we talk about music, in what sense is the written thing um, and all of these performances, all of these expressions and manifestations, in what sense are those all the same thing? Uh, musicologists and editors draw this line a little differently from librarians, but both groups acknowledge the importance of this question of what is the work. The WEMI entities have technical, practical implications for cataloging and classification, but they're also intellectual categories that are helpful in thinking about the different ways that we meet patrons' information needs as librarians. One expression or manifestation isn't necessarily interchangeable with another, especially when we're dealing with musical texts. Let's take a minute to think about how the WEMI entities relate to the kinds of editions and editor approaches discussed in the essay on musical texts. Different printed versions of a work are known as editions. Often they've been put together by an editor who has drawn on one or more existing sources for the music and then put it together for a publication. Different editions of music um, can be thought of as different expressions and Ferber terms. They're versions of the work that may include significant differences depending on the sources the editor used and the purpose and audience of the edition. The audience and purpose as well as the editor's philosophy determines the approach of the editor. On one end of the spectrum are those editions that are focused on recreating the work as closely as possible to what the editor believes is the composer's intention. Um, on the other hand, there are editions like uh, those that Bruda describes as enabling, that is editions that are intended to make the work accessible and usually performable by a wider audience. Facsimiles are probably the most historicizing um, in that they leave the musical text as precisely as possible in its original form. Um, we could see Ur text editions uh, on 
the historicizing end of this too, because they tend to modernize the notation and correct errors and that kind of thing, but they otherwise maintain as close a relationship as possible with the source material. Um, on the other end of this spectrum, additions intended primarily for performance might include ornaments written out that would have originally been left to the performer or instructions for bowings or fingerings, or even arrangements or reductions for different instruments. Um, so they are really intended to enable the performance of the work um, and not to emphasize its original historical content. All of this is important for music librarians to understand, not just for the purposes of cataloging, but for selection, reference, and instruction. It's important to understand how the different types of scores you encounter are likely to fit the information needs of your patrons, both in terms of physical format and in intellectual content. A patron may come to you asking for an urtext edition for an advanced piano student, or looking for something to play from as a beginning violinist, and you'll need to understand the difference between the types of editions and how to locate them. Or a vendor may offer you the option of a study score with or without accompanying parts, and you'll need to balance your understanding of the needs of your community with what's available and practical for the library to purchase, bind, and house. Understanding the terms musicologists, editors, and performers use to describe the text is probably one of the most basic music-specific bits of information you'll need, so make sure to review this material if it's new to you. I'll include both of the video and the PowerPoint slides with and without narration in the Canvas page for this week.